I mean, still about, I don't know, I'm really bad at distances. I mean, still like a little ways away, but also very close. I'm telling the bear story. It's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 231 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today I'm coming to you from Rock Springs, Wyoming. It is crazy windy outside, which is why I'm in here today. But the benefit of that is that we get to have Toaster with us. So I think you can only see, well, maybe you can see his face. <laughs> just a little bit, but he will be here in our background today. Other than that, you just get to enjoy the loveliness that is the Planet Fitness parking lot. Yeah, I mean, it's windy enough that when I had the window cracked, it's whistling, and sometimes the wind gusts will shake our van. So it's just better to be in here today. So I have been crushing my knitting goals over this past week. We've had a lot of time in the car that I have no internet, so I can't be distracted by work or Instagram or anything like that. So I have been knitting away and I just can't wait to share with you my projects today. I have a finished object to show you. So last week I shared some project plans that I wanted to clear my needles off so I could start some new projects. And one of those goals was to finish these socks. And actually I haven't woven in the ends yet. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I need to do that. And I also need to block them, of course, but it is a finished pair. So this yarn is from Desert, oh, there we go, Desert Vista Dye Works. And it is called a quart of. And I got this yarn. I ordered it. I think Desert Vista Dye Works yarns are like almost all kind of pre-orders. And so they take, you know, uh, six weeks or something to come. I don't, I don't remember exactly how long, but I was so excited to get this yarn because I knew I would be reading the last A Court of Thorns and Roses book um, around the time that the yarn arrived, hopefully, and it worked out like perfectly. And that's when I knit sock number one is during the reading of that book. And then I kind of was like, well, okay, I'm going to start the next Sarah J Moss series that I haven't read yet, which is the Crescent City one. And I'm on the book, on the second book now. Um, but it just was lingering for too long for me. I started these on January 27th and it is now June. And I was like, okay, I'm done like just working on these while I read Sarah J Moss books. I'm not getting as much morning knitting and reading time as I would maybe you know, it's just not consistent with travel and everything. So I'm like, let's just knock these things out. So that's what my plan was last week. I gave myself like four days to get the foot complete. So I was back here where this really fun marker is. I think I got this one from Black Pearl Magic. I'm not sure. And then I completed the foot. I didn't have too long to go. Finished up the toe and now I just need to weave in the ends. I've already woven in some of the ends for like the leg and the heel. All of that is done because I like to do that. I like to weave in my ends as soon as possible so they're not dangling and bothering me. So now they are a lovely finished pair and they're so fun and so bright. I really like these. So this pattern is the Vanilla is the New Black Pattern by Anae Fletcher. And this is the first pair that I cast on and my last pair to finish. I made two other pairs of socks out of this pattern, but I haven't worn any of them yet. I know that's really silly. I think they're like all up here in this cabinet and I just haven't worn them. I don't know why. I think it's because they're not in the place where I put my like hand knitted socks that I wear regularly. So I just haven't. And now we are headed into warm weather. So I don't know when I'm going to wear these, but hopefully soon. Um, we are heading back to Tennessee for hmm, like a week and a half, I think. And so I should have plenty of time to do some blocking, get these finished finished. And then I might do a little rearranging. Like I'm still going to bring some hand knit socks with me because we're going to continue to travel through the end of this year. So at some point it's going to get cold again. Um, but maybe I'll kind of refresh things and pull in some of my new socks instead of my tried and true ones and, you know, freshen that up a bit. My goal last week was to finish these socks by June 2nd, or 
ish, I guess June 3rd, so that I could cast on my sock leak socks on Monday, June 3rd. And I crushed that too. I actually got the A Court of Thorns and Roses socks finished, I think May 31st. And then when did I cast these on? I had to write it down. Um, I started these on Sunday, June 2nd. So just a day ahead of my goal. So I really wanted to clear my needles because I wanted to start on my sock week socks. And I'm just going to work through those one at a time. So of course, I'm starting to use the Sock Week products as well. If you haven't seen that video, I go through all of them. They're all going on sale this Friday, June 7th. But this is the bag from Goose and Ghost. Ashley designed this fabric for us, which is so fun. And then I started, oh no, I didn't get the label. Hold on, I need to go get the label. Out of convenience and also curiosity, I decided to start with my Knit Circus yarn. So again, this is going to be going on sale on Friday. It's not available yet. This colorway is called wonderlust and i haven't showed it to you yet have i so this is what it looks like it is a gradient it comes with two matching cakes i have the medium set which is 75 grams in total um, but it's going to be available on the medium and the large set the large set is 100 grams in total and why it's important to pay attention to which size you get it's because you probably want to use every single color of the gradient in your socks and if i had purchased the larger one the 100 gram one i would have to make super tall socks in order to get all of my colors in even still i'm probably gonna have to make taller socks than I typically do. But like I said, that was the curiosity piece. I want to see what these look like when I work them up. I have these on, uh, or have this in the listing, um, and I'm sure Knit Circus will too, but they have kind of a, like if you're a women's size or men's size, this in US sizes, you should get the medium size and then same for the large so that you have some like guidance on that. And the other reason I chose these to cast on first is it was sort of a last minute cast on. We were it's been too cold to take knitting on a hike lately, so I just haven't had a hiking project. I guess my other socks could have been that, but I normally, or like in the past couple of months, I've had a hiking project always ready. And we were getting ready to go on a hike, and it was actually nice outside. It was like 60 degrees. So I thought, let me cast something on real quick. What's ready to go? And it was these because they're already wound up. They come in the cakes already ready to go. Now, Knit Circus recommends you start with a toe up sock if you haven't used their gradients before um, that way you like know exactly how far you need to go right because you're not going to change the length of your foot your foot length is not going to change so you can't really just keep extending it on but if you start at the toe you could continue to make the leg a little bit longer a little bit longer to incorporate all the colors so i just started a vanilla plain uh <laughs> toe up sock I started mine with 28 stitches, increased every other round to 56 stitches. Does that make sense? I think that's right. I put it in my Ravelry page. So now I'm just working the foot on 56 stitches. And my goal for these, because I do want to try to get through all of the sock week yarns, um, my goal for these is to work 20 rounds per day. So this was my 20 rounds that I did yesterday. I'm going to try to get through 20 rounds today. 20 rounds tomorrow. By that point, I should be about at the heel. So then I'll do the heel, 20 rounds in the leg, 20 rounds in the leg until I'm finished, work on the, then I'll start the second sock. And then hopefully in a couple of weeks, I can start another pair. So that's kind of how I'm pacing myself. I need to grab one of our really fun sock week stitch markers and add it in here now that I've shared this because I always put a progress keeper. I move my progress keeper every podcast and that's how I keep up with my projects week over week. I'm thinking about doing a two by two rib once I get through the heel on the leg of these because I'm guessing I'm going to have to make a pretty long leg and ribbing is just really forgiving in that way that, you know, you can keep going up onto larger parts of your leg. You know, it's for, for me and I know everyone's uh, foot anatomy and leg anatomy is different, but for me, the narrowest part of my leg portion is right above my ankle and then it gets wider from there. And so rib is just really forgiving. And of course, if I get to it where I need to make them super long, I can always add in some increases. This is probably gonna be a tangled mess. So let me start working on it while I tell you a little bit about this. So my sporty shrug was my other project, aside from the socks I shared first, that I had deadline kind of guideline knitting this week. And again, crushed it. I am well ahead of where I wanted to be. 
Oh my gosh. I've got two sleeves going and a ball of yarn attached to each sleeve. So that's why it's a little bit tangly. Once I get it out of the bag, it's really no problem, but it is a little, <laughs> a little bit annoying when you first get it out. So my goal, oh my goodness, hold on. Somehow they get looped through the magic loop. I don't know how this happens or what's going on. Okay, one's untangled. Um, my goal for this was to finish, oh wait, I don't think I wrote it down on here. Where's my notebook? I love having my notebook and then I can just tick things off. It's so, so nice. Okay, so my goal is to get through the decreases by June 6th. Today is June 4th. I think. Yep. And I am well past the decreases on both arms. And I am working on sort of like the plain, you know, knit this many inches until you get to this point to do the final parts of the sleeve. So I'm really pleased with that. My second goal was to block it by the 8th. And we should be back in Tennessee by the 8th which means I will, once I reach the point in the sleeves where I feel like it's long enough, I'm just gonna set this aside and I will wait until we get back to Tennessee so I can block it much more easily than I can in here where we have limited water, limited space. Um, and then hopefully I can completely finish this by um, June 12th, which will mean in the next podcast, I hope to have a finished object. Um, all of that to say, I wanna start a new garment. Um, I did have a, I did share this a little bit in my project planning video that went out on Tuesday, um, but I want to make the twisted t-shirt and I will be sharing more about that soon because I'm really, really excited. But back to this because I haven't even told you the pattern. <laughs> this is the Sporty Shrug by Jacqueline Sayslack and it really looks like a shrug now. I need to go, I need to weave in some ends. Again, I'd like to weave those in as soon as I can because I've already done the finishing on the neck and on the bottom. So like the body is completely done. It's been done for a while. And I've just been working on these gangly sleeves because I have long arms. Um, they're very skinny and they are very tight. Um, after I finished the decreases, I finished the sleeve one decreases last week, sleeve two decreases this week. I did a try on and I have a picture of that. So I tried this thing on and from here, I'm supposed to knit about three inches till I get to the base of my thumb. And for me, it's gonna be more like five or six inches. This is very typical. I typically need to add length to the sleeves for my arms and it's a very easy adjustment to make and so nice to be able to make a sweater that fits me here where I'm smaller and also here where I'm bigger, where I'm longer. So love that about knitting. So great. And I have plenty of yarn, so there's no problem. I've got, where did the other ball of yarn? Oh, it's still in the bag. I have these two yarns attached. I, I, I used three balls of yarn on this. So essentially I used one ball of yarn on the body and I still have, well, I, this ball of yarn, I think I did, I think it was just the body that I did this one on. And then Another ball of yarn, I did the swatch and the sleeve. That may not be true. So here's my swatch, decent size. So all of this is still yarn I could use if I need it. I don't think I'm going to because I still have this much left on each of the sleeves. Since this one's a little bigger, I think I did swatch on this one. So plenty of yarn with the three skeins, which is very nice. I'm making, I wanna say the second or third size in this pattern and this pattern is so cool it has you measure yourself in different places and like be you're able to adjust um you're able to adjust like the shoulders and the armholes and all of that so for me I'm making you know whatever size it is that I'm making I do have it in my project page but I'm using the wide shoulder notes so I actually have extra stitches and extra length in the armholes which I'm so grateful for because they are very small and then according to my measurements I was supposed to size down for the sleeves and I decided against that um, my gut was just telling me that that is not going to work for my arms and my body type I typically always have issues with the sleeves fitting me they're that they're too small so I knew the armholes were fine because I'd already tried it on, but I was like, my gut is telling me not to go down and reduce the stitches on the sleeve at all, even though my measurements are telling me that. I'm gonna stick with the same size sleeve that I have for my bust, and I'm so glad I did because like I said, the sleeves are a little tight. They are gonna get looser with blocking, which will be really good. So I have a question. What would you consider the base of your thumb? 
<laughs> because that's my next direction is to knit until the base of my thumb. So do you think it's right here? I'm making a thumb hole. So this feels right, but then would it be this? Is this the base of my thumb? I'm thinking it's here. Like that makes more sense, right? You knit straight until you get here because I'm kind of thinking of a glove. Anyway, I don't know. It, it just says base of the thumb. And there's not like a photo or anything. Actually, it might be in the schematic. I did not think to check that. So I will check that. Um, but yeah, so that's my next thing is knit until I get to the base of my thumb. And then I'm going to block it because I want to see are my, is my, are my sleeves going to grow or shrink? I'm actually thinking they're going to shrink because of the non-superwash yarn and the ribbing that they're going to expand, hopefully loosen up a little bit and then like come up a little higher. So then I'll know, okay, maybe I need to add a few more rows, then do the thumb holes, bind it off, block it again, and it will be ready to wear. So I am so excited um, for this project. I am using, which one of these? None of these are folded nice. I always end up folding them like in the middle of the label. Ritual Dyes Maven in the colorway uh, Chromite. So two ply uh, Rambouillet. It's very, very nice. So hopefully, Next week, you will see me, maybe not wearing this because I'll be in Tennessee next week and it's gonna be hot and humid, but at least trying it on to show off a finished object. Last project here, and I'm so tickled that I got to work on this this week. I was really disciplined with my knitting and I got a ton of knitting time during the day. So anytime we had some free time at night, like a lot of nights we end up stopping like stopping movement putting the bed down like at bedtime so there's really not a lot of time to like relax and you know watch a show and do some nighttime knitting stuff but uh this week we had a few nights like that and so i felt like this project was my reward for the kind of tedious hard work i mean hard work obviously knitting is so fun but sort of the tediousness of like okay i'm finishing a sock okay i'm working through sleeves sleeves are so long and then i got to reward myself with this gorgeous crochet project. So you've seen this before, unless this is your first episode, then you haven't seen it. But this is the Blanket of Knowledge. And it is a subscription yarn and pattern program from Hot Springs Fiber Company. And there are eight different colorway or like color themes to choose from. And I chose the one that's all pink. Um, so mine is very pink, but there are some that are that have more colors in it. There's one that's like all blues. There's one, I mean, there's just, there's so many. So they're really, really fun. And I have the sport weight version. You can choose sport weight or DK, but I thought it would be nice to crochet with sport weight. So this is February. <laughs> We're now in June. This is February's color and pattern, but I did, I didn't put a marker in here, but I finished up these this really fun stitch, this really lacy open stitch, Love Knots. So I did that, and then there's a few rows in here that I've done. I'm, I'm working through another uh, bit of the star stitch here. Showing you, I think I'm showing you the wrong side. Yeah, I'm working through another go of the star stitch, and then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be done with February, I've decided. I don't think I wanna do another, like, row of these love nets. They're really fun, but they're tricky to keep even. And I think it kind of looks nice and balanced to just have the one with the two like star stitches on either side of it. I think if I had two sets of that, it would not look balanced. Like I'd rather have one or three and I definitely don't have enough yarn for three. So it's going to save me time. <laughs> and also it's going to look better, I believe. So this is February's. And every single month comes with the yarn. It comes with a mini skein. So there's still more to do after I'm finished with that. There's like a, a break, which it has a different stitch pattern. And then the pattern comes in there. And it's a surprise every single month, which is so much fun. Here are um, March and April. Oh, shoot. I just got... Um, I just got Mays. I mean, you should already have Mays if you have the subscription. But um, I needed to have it sent somewhere where I could pick it up. So let me go grab it and we'll open it up together. I just saw a glimpse of the stitch and it looks so stinking cool. The reason I started getting this subscription is because I wanted to learn more crochet stitches. And I should mention that there is a knit version too, where there's fun new knit stitches every single month. And Tracy, who dyes the yarn, also designs both the knit and crochet patterns. So it's just really, really fun. So if you're a knitter, you can use that for knitting or maybe 
if you're like me where you're you're a knitter and you can crochet but like crochet you don't have the as extensive of a knowledge and you want to build that up like that's how i'm using this blanket so oh cute this one came with a stitch marker actually i think they usually do come with stitch markers um yeah, they do. They also come with stitch markers. I just don't pay good enough attention, but this one's so cute. Okay, so a lovely darker pink. And again, they're not all pink. <laughs> just the one I picked. It's called Serenity. Um, so this is called Rosehip Tea. And the stitch marker is like uh, infused water, I think. It's really, really cute. So this is May. So this one you can... Well, if you subscribe now, you'll be getting June's box. Um, but I don't I don't know exactly what Tracy does, like if you can reach out and get previous months, but you can start at any time. Like I started in February and I think the boxes started last fall. So like you can join in any time and just go from there. So, so fun. I'm so excited. And then, oh, some Oreos. Yum. And then the, the mini skein is the same every single month. So it you know, keeps consistency. Got a couple of cute stickers. Actually, those are so cute. I've been adding stickers to my water bottle lately. And then of course the pattern. And in your first box, you get either a crochet hook or a knitting needle, depending on what pattern you pick. So that looks pretty cool. I'm excited for that. That looks so fun. So I'm gonna slide that in here. So let's talk about getting caught up on this because I love working on this project, but it's been hard to make it a priority when uh, it's like, I don't, I just feel like I don't have as much time as I normally do to sit and work on something in the evening. I find it really hard to crochet while we're driving because I have to look down at it a lot. It makes me feel a little bit nauseous. Whereas knitting, I can pick something simple where I don't have to look at it and I don't get car sick. So it just is not practical for me to crochet while we are riding in the car. And we've been doing that so much lately, so many hours in the car. So I'm trying to, you know, find balance and carve out more time to include crochet as a fun project into my day to day you know, a lot of time for fun. So I'm really trying to do that, but I'm thinking, how am I gonna get caught up? If I'm still working on February, <clears throat> four months later, how am I gonna do that? So I did talk about this in my project planning video, but just briefly, I wanted to share kind of how I thought through this. So for this month, I, my only goal for June is to finish February, which includes this part. I'm, I'm actually very close. I only have like two and a half rows to go. It includes that. And then also adding the mini skein. And let me see if I can pull just the February one. Oh, that's April's. Um, February. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, I've loved on this pattern. It's definitely got like splish splashes on it. Um, this is the bonus stitch that I'll be doing. So this is this is the stitch that I'm doing now. And that's the bonus stitch that will be done in the cream yarn. So that's gonna be fun. That'll also be a new one for me. I love that so much. So just for June, I'm gonna only do that because we are going on vacation mid-June and this is not a project that I'm planning to bring because I would just wanna keep things really simple. And then starting in July, I'm gonna kick it into high gear and I'm gonna to try to work through two months of pattern at a time. So when I do that, I will be caught up by October. <laughs> <laughs> so in July, I can do March and April. In June, or not in June, sorry, in August, I just wrote this down. It's hard for me to think through. In August, I can do May and June. September, I can do July and August. And then October, September and October, and I will finally be caught up. And by that time, I will have, let's see, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and September. Eight like strips into my blanket, it'll be pretty tall by that point. I'm not making this super huge. Um, that's the other fun thing is you can customize the size. And if you don't wanna work it like this, where you're working it width wise, you can actually work it in squares. I think you can get like two squares out of each month's yarn. Anyway, I'm very, as you can tell, I'm very excited to be hopefully consistently working on this again, add my new yarn in here, 
so fun. I love blankets. I love crochet blankets. And this one is a super fun one. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to say. I do have an affiliate link for the blanket of knowledge. Tracy and I uh, worked together on that. So if this is something that you found out about through me and you want to use that link, that's great. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And it just supports the podcast by throwing a little bit of that back my way. And of course, you're also supporting Hot Springs Fiber Company, which is a lovely thing to do. Okay. I think that's everything for projects. I also have loads to talk about. And in our travels today, we've been to a ton of yarn stores and I have more yarn purchases to show you. This week I'm gonna share in our travels slightly different. Instead of doing a chronological account of what has been going on, I have grouped this into a few different sections. I, uh, am I loud today? I feel like I'm being loud and talk talking very fast. I think I'm like, extra perky and caffeinated today and excited to be doing this. So apologies if the energy is a little bit extra today, um, but here's the four categories. So the first one is gonna be the cowboy yarn crawl because we have gone to five out of seven Wyoming yarn stores so far. The second is gonna be Yellowstone and then right after that Grand Tetons because we spent the majority of our week in these national parks. And then I just have one more like really short thing to share about being here in Rock Springs, Wyoming. So settle back in because we got some fun things including a bear story going on. Let's start with the yarn stores. So the Cowboy Yarn Crawl is happening all across Wyoming at all seven yarn stores that are in the state. And it started on Memorial Day and goes through Labor Day. So there's plenty of time to go through. If you're coming to Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, driving across the northern part of the United States, going somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, you will probably pass through one of these yarn stores. And they are all awesome. We've been to all of them already, though we still have two more to go during yarn crawl time so I can get all of my stamps. So there is a passport, actually, let me get, grab my bag, it's right here though. Um, so when you participate in the crawl, whatever store you go to first, you get this cute little bag and you get a passport and it doesn't cost anything to participate in the yarn crawl. And then they stamp them. So you can see they're all over. Here's Northern Wyoming, and then there's one out here and then two in Southern Wyoming. We are right here, I believe, yes. We're in Rock Springs right now, and we hit all of these last week. And we're going to Rock Springs, and then we're going to Laramie today. <laughs> so lots of driving to do. Toaster just started snoring, oh my gosh. So this is also really fun because all of the yarn stores have a stitch marker that they share. We're actually gonna do a whole video about the Wyoming Yarn Crawl and show all of the stores, and we're going more in depth at the fiber mill that's included. So we have lots of fun videos coming from Wyoming, but I just wanna share these briefly today and also share the yarns, the Wyoming yarns and one Idaho yarn <laughs> that I have been collecting for my blanket. I actually haven't worked on my blanket this week. Um, some of the yarns I didn't get wound because it was just busy. So I will be adding these in later when I get to Nashville, no biggie, or maybe I'll hand wind part of it off to do later this week. I don't know yet. We first started at the Fiber House in Sheridan, Wyoming. It's very cute, it's a, it's a house, and it is really nice inside. Um, we met Donna and her husband, Chris, who own the store, and we chatted with them for a long time. They wanted to see the van, um, they got to meet Toaster, and they were just really, really sweet. And most of these yarn stores, actually I think all of them, we like, I just didn't have it together. Normally I email yarn stores ahead of time um, if we're gonna do any bit of filming. And if we're doing a full tour, I of course email and communicate with them ahead of time. But um, we just like didn't really know where our plans were gonna lead us. And so it ended up like, hey, we can actually make it to all seven yarn stores on this crawl. So all of these store owners have been so gracious to meet us for the first time and then trust us to uh, film in their shop and share it. So thank you to all of you. You're so awesome. So this store really, really cute. I ended up getting uh, my first Wicked Tint yarns, uh, which they are a dyer in Wright, Wyoming. And we saw this at a couple of the stores, but I went ahead and grabbed it here at the Fiber House. And it's really pretty, it's called Aurora. I don't know if it's after Aurora Borealis or if that's just top of mind, but it's certainly looks like it. So that's going to be going in my blanket very soon. The next one we went to was Swanky Mountain in Gillette. And this store has been there for about two years, very modern. They had a shop dog, 
so cute um, and lots and lots of fun different local items. Um, we got to talk to Selene, who is the owner, and her husband was also there and he was weaving, which was really cool. They were just a really fun bunch. I actually got some stitch markers. Shoot, where are they? I think if I can reach them real quick, I'll show them to you. Um, I think I put them away in here. Let's see if they're in my little collection. Sometimes I just throw things into this basket and then later I put them all away properly, but I have a feeling, oh, you know what though? They may actually be in this bag because I have been putting all the stitch markers. Oh, there's something else cool to show you, huh? Okay, come on, Natalie, can we find it? And I think I'm just gonna have to dump this whole thing out and see, oh yes, here they are, perfect. Okay, so got these at Swanky, was it Swanky Mountain? Okay, so actually, <laughs> I just realized I put the cowboy hat on there. So this little cowboy hat was the was a special stitch marker for the crawl. So it's actually not part of the set, but look how cool this is. It's like in resin, little fruits and stuff. We're actually doing a fruit and veggie, like garden themed make along in the membership for the month of June. So I definitely, I'm gonna leave these out because I need to put this on my project because they are just perfect for that make along. Next up, we went to Mountain Meadow Wool in Buffalo, Wyoming. And this is where we filmed a full tour at this fiber mill. So if you know Farmer's Daughter Fibers in Montana, um, some of their yarn comes from Mountain Meadow Wool. Also, all of the yarn stores I believe that we've been to in Wyoming also carry Mountain Meadow Wool. And then of course at this fiber mill, they have a storefront and they have Mountain Meadow Wool. So we spent the like, five hours there filming, meeting Karen, interviewing her. Um, it was so, so fun. So later when we have our Wyoming, our cowboy yarn crawl video, you'll see them, but then you'll also see more detail. We got to tour um, where they make the yarn and they actually make finished items too. We got to tour all of that. So you'll see that coming in their full tour later on. Um, but we had a great time there. They also have two sheep and their names are, let's see, Lambert and Yarnold, which is so cute and you can feed them and you can also take a self-guided tour of the fiber mill which is really cool they have uh like a what do you call it like a terrace landing that kind of thing so you can get a bird's eye view of everything in the back which is so fun and from a safe distance you know all that machinery is can be dangerous so it was very very cool to see that so that's three of them um and then we went to Wyoming Yarn and Fiber in Cody just before we went to Yellowstone. And this was really fun. This store is beautiful and very big. And Carista, who is the owner, was there and she was like, oh, hi, Natalie. And I'm like, we know each other. I'm like, you look so familiar. We hadn't met in person before, but Carista actually was a test knitter for me long time ago when I first started designing patterns. And I just, I guess her face was familiar from that. Anyway, we had a wonderful time there getting to talk with her. And she's also a yarn dyer. So she started out as a yarn dyer and she is Sweet Mountain Crafts. And she has her dye studio now in her store. Isn't this pretty? So this is the one I got for my blanket. It's a sock set. Um, she does lots of sock sets and has lots of minis. Um, when she started dyeing, she said there wasn't a lot of people that offered these, um, which has of course changed in the meantime, but she loves still putting together really fun kits and really fun different sock sets. This one is called Spring Bulbs. It's, uh, it's one of her, she, she has a sock um, subscription, a sock set subscription. I can't remember what she calls it. We will include it in the YouTube video for the cowboy yarn crawl, but she doesn't usually have the sock sets from the subscription in the store. Unless there are some leftovers, she puts them in like a few months later. So I was really excited to get this one because it's from the sock set or from the sock subscription. So that was really fun. That was an amazing store. And then yesterday we went to Knit on Pearl in Jackson. And this was a really cute shop also in this like kind of it looks like it used to be a house uh, situation. Very cute, lots of little different rooms. Oh my goodness, this is a tourist town for sure. Or And like, I think people go and live there in the summer. There was somebody in there that was buying like their summer blanket project and they had come up from, I, I don't know where they lived, but they were there for the next few months for the summer. I'm like, wow, what a life. That would be 
so awesome to come and live in such a beautiful place right by Grand Tetons and anyway, so cool. But the um, woman working in the shop, Carolyn, is not the owner, but we got to meet her with her and chat with her. She was great. Also let us film, which was so nice. Um, and they just had a ton of Montana and Wyoming and Idaho dyers in there. So lots of really cool things to choose from. I ended up getting a yarn from the Teton Yarn Company, and they are in Idaho. And they had so many colorways that were named after the Grand Tetons. They had like a Wyoming sunset and all of these other things too. But this one is called Hidden Falls. And we actually went to Hidden Falls. We hiked to Hidden Falls. I'll talk about that in just a little bit and we'll show you the picture. Or maybe we can put the picture in here. I'll try to remember to tell Kent to do that. <laughs> put the picture in here of the falls next to the yarn so you can see them together. Super cool. So that's all the yarn that I that I purchased and all of the yarn stores that we went to over the past week. So five of the seven on the Cowboy Yarn Crawl, but we are going through Rock Springs. We're here in Rock Springs and Laramie where the other two stores are. And we came through those already. So we've actually already been to them and filmed there, but we want to go through and get our stamp. So, you know, we're already here traveling. So we might as well get the stamp. If you get all the stamps, you drop it off at your final store and you get entered for a grand prize. And there are like needle sets and all kinds of things in these prizes. So they're really, really nice. Okay, let's switch gears and let's talk about Yellowstone. Yellowstone was our 40th national park, I believe. And wow, it was just incredible. Kent's mom was so excited for us to go to Yellowstone. Kent's already been when he was a kid, um, but it was my first time and it's her favorite place. So she was so excited for us. We saw so many animals just about every day. I actually think every day we were up early on the road driving through the park by 6 a.m. because uh, dawn and dusk are the best times supposedly to see animals. So that turned out to be pretty true. We also saw animals during the day though. so. Who knows? Um, but we did see a lot of animals. We saw a ton of bison. That's kind of what Yellowstone is sort of known for is like they, they have the largest, um, what is, what, how do you phrase it? They have the largest like wild bison herd, um, like undomesticated, I think is maybe how they phrase it. But they have a ton of bison and we saw baby bison. They were so cute and they would play and run and then they would like flop down and look like they were dead. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just really, really cute. Sometimes they would even be on the road. Um, and then you just, of course, wait for them to move because you're not going to honk at them or move them or anything like that. So that was really, really cool to see all of those. Um, we saw a lot of bears, like maybe 10 or more bears. Um, there were two bears that we saw multiple times a day, two grizzlies that the uh ranger um so whenever there's like bears around or whenever there's a lot of people stopped on the road to like look at the animals um usually a ranger will get there pretty quickly and just make sure the animal's safe and that everyone is being safe which was great um so i got to at, like listen to the ranger talking to people about these bears and they are apparently two-year-old grizzly bears that have been recently um kicked out by their mom because you know they're old enough to be on their own now. So mom kicked them out and their siblings and they were hanging around together. And we saw them every day in the same area, which was cool from a distance from the car, which is how I prefer to see bears. Um, we also saw a ton of black bears. One, one time we saw a black bear like running across a field um, near a bunch of, I can't remember if it was elk or antelopes or deer or something like that. We saw a bunch of those too. So yeah, we saw elk, we saw antelopes, we saw deer. Um, and we even got to see wolves, which was really great. So one of the mornings that we got up really early, we drove to this kind of overlook area. There was a bunch of people with the really long uh, telescope lenses that are hooked up to their phones. So you can, they were very generous to tell us what they'd been seeing and show us on their phones. Um, they were not just doing it for us, but anyone who was coming up. So we got to see on their screen, 
like live footage of the wolf, but you couldn't see it with the naked eye. It, they were like over a mile away. And even with binoculars, I was able to like just make out one of the wolves on binoculars. So while we did see wolves, it wasn't like they were right by the road or anything. They were definitely hard to find. And then they showed us as well a video that had happened earlier in the day before we got there of the wolf puppies um, coming out of the den. And that was really cute and really adorable. Now, the other cool thing about Yellowstone is the geysers, of course. There are so many different types of geysers, I had no idea. So there's several different areas. I think there was like three that we walked on where there are boardwalks, um, you know, like wooden slats lifted above the ground for you to walk around so that you can go by all of these geysers close up. It's very, um, there's tons and tons of signs that are like, do not step off the boardwalk. Do not throw rocks into the geysers. Do not touch the ground. Like it's very fragile, um, very dangerous, very acidic and very hot. Um, but as long as you stay on the boardwalks, you're good. Some of the geysers are called mud pots and they're like these boiling, gray clay kinds of things. Then there are these other ones that are the purest blue you will ever see. And they look super, super deep. And they almost look like you would want to just dive in like you're in a pool, but again, acidic and very, very hot. Then there are other ones that just kind of look like water, but then they have steam coming out of them. And I don't know, they're just all really, really cool. We saw two geysers erupt. We saw one kind of at a distance. And then we saw Old Faithful, Faithful, Faithful. I don't know why I can't say that word. We saw Old Faithful go off twice, which was really cool. They have the whole area set up really nicely, like benches and everything for you to watch. And then they have a time prediction. Um, it's not as, ex or as um, it used to be on the hour. Um, but then an earthquake kind of changed that. So now it's like every 60 to 90 minutes and they have like an estimated time within 20 minutes of that time. So we sat around and waited for it and I knitted on my sock and I got to see Old Faithful go off and then Toaster got to see it a second time and he was definitely not impressed. So all in all, Yellowstone was just wonderful and we spent I think four-ish, about three to four days there which was really great. Uh, we spent one night in West Yellowstone in Montana and then two nights in the park. Then we went to Grand Teton National Park, which is not too far away from Yellowstone. We did not see as many animals in Grand Teton. I think we also were like, we saw so many animals in Yellowstone that we weren't as like concerned about getting out and seeing animals. So we kind of more waited later in the day and kind of took our time. We did see a moose. I didn't get a picture of it. Um, and then the most exciting, but also scary thing is that we saw a bear on our hike. So we did one big hike. Um, we went to Jenny Lake and started, we walked around that, around it and we went up to Hidden Falls, which is what the yarn um, that I got is named after Hidden Falls. And it was very, very beautiful. But about half a mile into that hike, um, we came upon a group of people who were stopped on the trail. And so usually when somebody's stopped on the trail and they're looking at something, that means there's an animal. So we're like, oh, what are you looking at? And they, there was a deer just a little ways ahead and to the right um, in the trees. So I'm like, oh, cool. So we're like looking at the deer, you know, giving the deer space because we don't wanna scare it. We don't want it to scare us. We just, we're like gonna let it, you know, pass through. And then as we're all standing there, another deer comes running from the left side of the trees, running across the path into the right side of the trees. And that kind of made me go, hmm, something spooked the deer. And then I'm like, ah, it's nothing. It's gonna be nothing. It's fine. So Kent and I start walking ahead of this other group of about four people. And as we're walking, I see through the trees, uh, the, the, their path split. So there was like two trails that came around and this like small group of trees. The people that were on the other side of the group of trees were like waving their arms to me like this. And they were like, bear, bear, bear. And I look and there's a bear. I mean, still about, I don't know, I'm really bad at distances. I mean, still like a little ways away, but also very close. I'm telling the bear story. <laughs> You're fine. Come in. Um, slam the door. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so we see the bear. Ken has already gotten a little bit ahead of me. So I'm trying to get his attention to come back to the group because bears are supposed to stay a full football fill length, like eight bus lengths away from, and we were definitely too close to it because it surprised us. We didn't know it was there. So I'm like, Kent, Kent, come back, come back, come back. So we come back and the bear, in that time, the bear had come from 
being in the trees to being on the trail. And we did get some pictures of it. Um, we were able to see that it was a black bear, which is a little bit less concerning, actually quite a bit less concerning than a grizzly because they're usually not aggressive, but obviously you're supposed to be um, very safe, very cautious around bears. No cubs with it or anything. So that was also a good sign. Um, so the bear you know, we kept backing up and backing up and getting further away, further away back down the trail um, away from this bear. Um, but we were hoping it would just kind of go off into the trees. So it would sort of go off into the trees and then come back on the path and then walk up the path a little bit and then go off into the trees, come back and walk up. And so while we're waiting, it's probably about 15 minutes, more and more people are coming down the trail. We're only half a mile from the start and we're like, there's a bear and they're like, oh my gosh. And so they, they look and then we all back up and then, you know, we're just trying to be cautious, but also like not just leave the trail because we're on a hike and eventually the bear, bear is going to go somewhere. Um, but anyway, it was very, very interesting, scary at first, but once more and more people got there and once the bear just kept walking further and further away from us, um, I wasn't, we weren't super concerned. There was like five of us that had bear spray if it came down to it. Um, so yeah, it was kind of scary, <laughs> but also kind of cool to see a bear. Um, in its habitat, which was amazing. So yeah, eventually, like 30 minutes later, the whole group were able to get by the bear. It's gone far enough away into the trees that we're not worried about scaring it, we're not worried about it scaring us, and we made it to the falls. <laughs> but what an experience that was. The Grand Tetons, I guess I didn't even share this, they're this like m incredible mountain range that is so jagged looking and snowy and just magnificent. I mean, it just surrounds the horizon. It's it's just incredible. I don't even think we got any pictures that really do it justice, but it was so beautiful. We stayed two nights just outside of the park, like 10 minutes down the road from one of the entrances. And we also had to be very cautious about bears there. So I'm pretty happy to be back in an area that is developed enough that there is no concern about being out in the dark with toaster and worrying about a bear. <laughs> Okay, last thing here. Um, oh, no, wait, one more thing about Grand Tetons. I forgot about this. Um, we had a really cool experience when we walked into the visitor center at Grand Teton um, and ran into another knitter and their family. Um, it was actually somebody that I've met before in Illinois, and they were on, they're on this like epic road trip with their kids um, from Illinois all the way to the coast of Oregon and back. So they're doing lots of different national parks too. So we stopped and chatted for a long time. I'm so sad that I don't have a picture on my phone. Um, so if you see this, send me a picture. I want, I want to have the picture. Um, but we, we chatted for quite a long time. And then the next day on the top of Signal Mountain, we ran into each other again. Um, and that was really fun. We chatted again and we were like, oh, let's go down to Jenny Lake and we'll hike together. But the problem was it was so crowded. And so when we got down to Jenny Lake, we um, got separated trying to park. We ended up parking like it took us 15 plus minutes to walk to the trail entrance from where we parked. And so we lost each other then. We didn't have a way to contact each other. So we didn't even get to say goodbye, which is like so sad, but it was very fun that we got to run into each other a handful of times. And she was wearing these beautiful knitted tops and our kids were so sweet and so fun. Her husband was so nice. They got to see the van, they got to meet Toaster. And it was just a really, and one of those cool experiences of like, because of knitting, um, it's broadened the, our community so much. And even when we're somewhere and, you know, in the middle of a national park in Wyoming, there is still familiarity there and still people that we kind of like have a relationship with, which is very cool. So last thing here, um, in Rock Springs, um, I knew that there was one person that I just had to meet and that is one of my Love and Stitches members, Carla. When we came through Rock Springs last time, she just happened to be out of town and we didn't get to meet. And I thought, oh, we're probably never coming back through Rock Springs, Wyoming again. Um, I'm so sad to have missed her. Uh, but then once we realized our plans were gonna take us back through Rock Springs again, I reached out to Carla and she's like, you won't believe it. I'm actually going out of town again. However, there's one night overlap and when we were here and when she was here. So we're like, great, let's plan dinner. Let's get together. So last night we got together at a Mexican restaurant and she surprised me by having some of her knitting friends there too. So I got to meet all of them as well. So it was me and Kent, Carla and three other lovely knitters. And that was just so fun. I do have a picture of this. <laughs> so we had a great time and a great dinner. Oh my gosh, we were so hungry. We 
scarfed down that dinner. So such a fun week filled with outdoor things, knitting things, um, feeling very, very lucky as we kind of close this chapter of travel. We're headed home to Tennessee for about a week and a half, and then we are going on a true vacation, like a non-work kind of a thing, no driving, any of that. So we will be doing that through the end of June, and we will be picking it back up in the van in July. This week's new video is my summer project plans where I talk in a lot more detail about a couple of the projects I shared today, but actually more about projects I'm planning to cast on. So if you want to see a sneak peek of what might be coming up on the podcast in future weeks and months, and if you just like project planning, you will love that video. Coming up next week, I'm going to be doing a summer tank video. So very similar to the 10 spring tops that I shared. I've been researching and saving tank top patterns for at least a month. And so I have lots of them to share with you and they're all really, really great and really, really fun. Now, this week, most importantly, is the Sock Week Shop update on June 7th. So starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time, all of the accessories are going live. Then at 11.30, all of the bags, and then at noon, all of the yarn. So by noon, everything will be out, but I stagger them this way so that you have an opportunity to get at least one thing in each category. All of these are independent makers. You're gonna be shopping in their individual shops and supporting them directly. And they are just, for the most part, one person. So they can only make so many things. So if you really want something, make sure you're there right as the shop updates happen so that you can grab what you want and get it in time for sock week. I have a whole video where I share all of the different products. You can really see them. And then I also have a page on my website, nittynatty.com, that has the details, the photos, the times, and the links to the shop for all of our different makers. I am planning to, um, I think I'm going to do like an Instagram live on Friday. Well, maybe not. Oh yeah, actually I will be able to because I think we're gonna be home um, by that point. So on Friday, I'm kind of planning to do an Instagram Live where I will be showing the products again like as they're going live so that you can have you know somebody right there telling you like, hey, this is ready for you now, go and shop it. Um, so yeah, very excited for that. Let's go through these events. We have uh, several different yarn crawls. What's been fun is in the last week, a couple of people have shared with me the things that they have um, purchased at the different like events and yarn crawls that I've shared. So that's so cool that sharing them here is, is raising awareness for them and people are actually going. So that is so cool. The slow yarn crawl PNW is happening in Washington and Oregon, May 24th through September 2nd. The cowboy yarn crawl, we talked a lot about that one, is happening in Wyoming, May 27th through September 2nd. The golden state yarn crawl is coming up Northern California, June 6th through the 9th. The Utah Yarn Crawl is in July, July 13th through the 20th. Arkansas Yarn Crawl, July 19th through the 27th. Chicago Yarn Crawl, July 20th through the 28th. Steel Valley Yarn Crawl is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, July 26th through August 4th. And the Boston Fiber Festival is at the Sowall Market on September 8th. I actually have some more of these I need to add, but I need to go through my emails. That is on my list for later today. Okay, I think that is everything. It is just about time for us to head to our next yarn store. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.